Hello, this is Scott Manley here, and welcome back to Moon Truckers, the world's favourite reality show about trucks on other planets. We have a trio of drivers here, and they have been sent on a very special mission to assist with the relocation of the Moonar base here. Now, uh, if you remember, in the last episode, we dropped them nose first onto the moon. Now they have found their wheels, they are finally able to drive like the way they trained. They're going to be heading over to the base and then they are going to be picking things up and getting ready to move. Now, if you look at the design, it's kind of like a, a hopper in the back with a robot arm. In theory, I, I wanted that so I could pick up these lights and stick them in the back there. But uh, I have bigger bigger plans first. There are bigger fish to fry before we, we deal with the lighting situation. So uh, if you remember the this modular lunar base that we dropped on the surface, and we have four parts still in orbit, we want to be able to move that whole thing. And it, it has wheels, but uh, it moves around using RCS. And if I use RCS, it would not get very far because it doesn't have... It would run out of fuel before it got anywhere. So it needs wheel power to move this thing across the surface. And yes, look at the... Look at the Buran cam there, helping us dock, and the docking node. Excellent! Now you notice it's a little high, but that's fine because those rear wheels can uh, adjust up and down. There you see, I adjusted the gear and it now connects. Actually, I accidentally hit the G key and deployed all my gear. A uh, bit of messing around here to make this work. Uh, you might notice that I'm sounding a little sick, because uh, I am sick, which is why this episode's a little shorter than normal. Uh, I just kind of wanted to get some reusable Kerbal space program out there. Anyway, uh, this whole thing is, of course, running at 90 degrees, and if we want to make this move with any grace, we're going to need to get all these wheels in line and agreeing on which way they're going. So if I can get this thing to come off, thank you, we'll just dock it onto the back there. And that will be a, that will be the first ever moon train. And we're not talking about that space train. That's for amateurs. No, this is this is real train on a surface, except that it doesn't have rails. It's, it's like a land train on the moon. So just bring this down, bring this down, and we will have four cars attached to the back of this. And the real question will then be, can I move the whole thing using just the wheel power on the front of this? Maybe we need RCS to get it started. We will test. Um, I came all the way to the moon without actually having tested this. But I figured it would work. And you know what? If it failed, that would just be funny. Yeah, so here we go. We're trying to get this thing to move. And you see the wheels spinning really fast, but it's not actually working. It's actually picking up speed because it's on a very slight incline down the slope. So, But the front wheels are actually spinning and not touching the ground. <laughs> so what do we do? Of course, we retract those rear wheels down so that they actually get some grip. And now we're actually picking up some speed. So we have a long way to go. We have about 30 to 40 kilometers eastbound. Um, in the words of, uh, was it Smokey and the Bandit? Eastbound and whatever. Robot arm is working. We got to do what they say can't be done. We got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Oh, never mind. Yeah, Smokey and the Bandit. Um, it was a great movie, I guess. Although I remember watching the sequel, which on reflection is terrible but hey look at these guys go they're they're able to do five six i'm taking it very easy to start with there is a long way to go and i don't want to cause this thing to fail now look at the epic terrain this is going to have to negotiate we're going to go in, be going down into that crater right the crater is where the deposit is so we need to negotiate some serious sized hills here now that will mean very careful use of the brakes. Thankfully, we have brakes on every single car. So we don't want it to run away from us, right? And of course, this is all running at four times normal speed. This whole move actually took something like two hours, and it was by far one of the most tedious things I've had to do in this game. 
Yeah, but yeah, look, it actually looks we're we're going a little faster. We're just letting the speed pick up a little, so to uh, make it fast enough. There, look, we broke ten meters per second. And uh, yeah, let's let's just adjust the robot arm so we can use it as a rear view mirror, because you know when uh when you're driving a train on the moon, you don't want somebody coming up behind you and uh you know coming round and you not seeing them, right? The, the traffic situation on the moon is a your big problem. There we go. Look at this giant hill we're going to have to negotiate. Oh my goodness. This is perhaps a little scary. So we should test the brakes now. Let's see. Will it stop? Well, it does slow down. Let's take it out onto the, onto the actual steep slope. Look at the thing bending like that, huh? It's pretty crazy. And we're getting steeper still. Yeah, like I said... If it wasn't for that rear view camera, I would have all sorts of problems with the local traffic, right? So that's uh, bringing us down, and we're going to... I think what we'll do is once we get it into a reasonable situation... You see this thing is just... I'm not even pushing forwards now. This thing just wants to go faster and faster, all on its own power. So we want to do this as carefully as possible. We're going to stop and save here. And since we're saving... Let's imagine what would happen if the brakes failed. Let's perform a simulation of what would happen to this moon train should the should the brakes fail and gravity just take the whole thing over. Well, you see, very quickly it picks up some a speed 10 meters per second. That's just going 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Look, oh, it's really starting to move there. 20... 21, 22, it's, I like the way it's kind of following the contours, but yet yeah, every time it hits a bump, it's starting to leave the surface. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, it's got totally airborne there, uh, except there's no air, uh, totally spaceborne there. Whoa, yes, it's like, a, it's like a worm flying through the skies. It's super worm, it's moon worm. And we're getting up to some serious speed, now we... Switch back to normal speed. This is what happens. And I'm doing my best to say, No, roll the other way! No! Yeah, this is actually one of the most awesome crashes I've ever had, ever had the privilege of watching. Because the velocity is relatively low, a lot of things just survive. And then proceed to follow me down the slope. <laughs> So you become part of this like cloud of wreckage and explosions that's just cascading down the slope of, on the moon. Awesome stuff. And, and no way for me to actually slow down because I've lost all my brakes now. <laughs> Trying to get some control of this. No, no it doesn't want it. It just goes one way or another. That robot arm's still alive. Maybe we can use it to drag ourselves around after the fact. Ah! <laughs> oh, more things exploding. That was probably the robot arm, no? Oh, he's of seems is he screaming or is he having fun? It's really hard to tell. Oh, I know that's that's definitely not having fun. Anyway, the other thing I needed to do uh, is to bring this this existing the Prometheus rig. It needs to go over to where we think the actual uh, deposit is, and the reason is we want a beacon to head towards, and this is far more mobile. We'll just pause and admire this thing from the air. Uh, again, from not air, because there's no air, but from the skies above the moon. Look at that. Two kilometers up, flying past. Isn't that nice? It's just really hard to adjust the camera on this thing. Okay, anyway, so we need to bring this out, and we want to get over these rough mountains here. I'm kind of just judging this by um, judging. I'm basically guessing, more or less. Actually, I have the latitude and longitude to work from, and I know where the deposit should be based on the, the maps. So I'm just trying to get over that way. And then we'll be able to land, test the deposit, because I don't actually have anything with a Keithane probe that is sitting on the surface. So what I'm going to be able to do is land this thing, test it, and assuming that's awesome, we'll use that as a navigation beacon to head towards. And that will help us pick our actual route. 
Oh, right, just a quick time warp to get ourselves down to ASAP again. And just manually flying it in, you know. Uh, <laughs> as Luke Skywalker says, no, I'm not using the autopilot. Just want to keep it on manual for a little while. We're just bringing it down, 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 down. And this is Billy Bob and Bob. Yeah, these guys are the, the old timers by now. Coming down with the, the greatest of ease. And they we're here. And we're ready to do our core sample and all that other boring stuff. Meanwhile, it's back to the Keithane rig, which is going to do its own, its own thing. So this is how you do this slope. You basically got to go down and keep your velocity low enough. So you just keep using the brakes, and as I said, there's brakes on every single one of these wheels. Every All these containers use the gear, the landing gear, so they don't have any motive power, but they do have brakes, which will help a great deal in, well, stopping me down so that I don't become a giant ball of rolling debris, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's much nicer when I actually control the speed. It doesn't really pick up, it doesn't really pick up any... Uh, vertical displacement above the surface, I guess, is the technical term. Of course, at 12 meters per second, that is more than twice the the official lunar speed record, or land speed record, that was set by Gene Cernan in his lunar rover on uh, Apollo 17. He managed a whole 11.2 miles per hour, which uh, I think I can actually run faster than that. Although, having said that, that is not wearing a 300-pound spacesuit on the surface of the moon. Um, of course, I mean, the lunar rovers are vastly simpler technology than space trucks. You know, space trucks have to be able to go long distances, and they have these nice air-conditioned cabs. Look, guys don't have any helmets on or anything. They are uh, true, uh, truly uh, trusting into the to the security of which that cabin is supplying, uh, providing them. I mean, hopefully they, they don't get hit and smash those windows or anything. That would be rather unfortunate. But yeah, the lunar rovers that came when the Apollo missions, they only came on the last three missions. And uh, they basically would let them explore a further area. Although they weren't allowed to go beyond the theoretical like return limit. They basically had to stay within range so that if it broke down, they could walk back. Although in Apollo uh, 17, they actually relaxed this criteria just a little and they went a bit further. In total, like the between the different missions, they, they only moved something like 70 kilometers. So, you know, it would barely... <laughs> it's, it's nothing really in comparison to these things. Anyway, yes, we're now, we're now on the other side. We have... God descended that slope. We are survived. We have survived. We are okay. And so now we need to get down. It is a really long drive from here. Now, uh, well, you see, if we're averaging, say, 10 meters per second, right? And we have, you know, 26 kilometers to go. Then that is less than an hour. But notice that we have the, the yellow timer on it. That means that the frame update was being delayed, so the actual time was running slower. And that was a problem. It meant that this whole thing just took way longer than it was supposed to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 27 kilometers out, and this is a long, tedious day. We're just going up the hill. You see, now this is something to show you. We are actually able to go uphill. But to get extra traction, sometimes I would retract these extra wheels uh, on the car behind me, and that would put more weight on the powered wheels at the front. That was sometimes needed to get up some slopes. But we didn't want to run all the way with those gear retracted because uh, if you got really fast, it was it was theoretically possible that, that if you hit a bump that you could ground out and smash that. And, well, that would end my trip real quick, wouldn't it, huh? Look at that, look how far we have come. And then, so now we've got over that hump, we fold the gear back out, and we continue heading towards this distant marker, which is now visible. Uh, another nice thing on this trip was so we, we could watch spacecraft kind of orbiting overhead. Uh, well, I say nice. Um, it was a rare highlight in a highly tedious operation. Whoa, getting air. Getting air. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly the kind of thing where if, if you'd had that gear out, you might, or not, if you had that gear retracted, you could 
possibly destroy your vehicle. Yeah, the, the landscape is not the most stable. And that's, of course, why I left the rest of the tanks parked in orbit, because I'm going to bring those down next when we finally arrive at the when we finally get this arrived and deployed and mining Keith in, then that will be us set. We shall call that our base forevermore. And honestly, if I have to... I'm not going to move it again. I'm going to cheat before I move this thing again. <laughs> yes, well, after many, many hours, we finally start getting close. We're now but a kilometre away, and look at this. The Prometheus station just sitting there, basking in the sun with its solar panels out taking that sweet, sweet sunlight and converting it into electricity so that it, it may mine. But it better hurry because it's going to be set obsolete really soon. Because I have the big boy here. You may have two drills, Mr. Prometheus. I have six. That's, well, four more. I have much more storage. I have lights. Yes, I think there will be a job for you in the future. Actually, maybe you want to go and visit this planet called Minmus. This, no, this moon. Ah, always get that wrong. Planet, moon, they're just basically the same thing except one orbits a, a planet and the other doesn't because it's a planet. Yes, come on. Break, 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 break. Yes. Um, um, stops very slowly. Uh, it is a giant train I guess <laughs> yay look we've got there ready to deploy get these drills out start drilling oh no oh yeah get the gear out detach nice there we go look we got a truck ready to drive drive away excellent oh oh no um yeah put out all the wheels there we go, that's better. And now he's going to have to actually go back and pick up the lights. That's the next one. <laughs> yes, oh yes, the tedium of running a space program. Space truckers, their job, well, moon truckers, their job isn't so glamorous after all. Doesn't matter, they have a TV show. And, yep, let's lock this in place so we have a permanent setup. And deploy the drill. Let's just check. It's going to go in and hopefully we'll get a sample to make sure we start getting Keithane. And there it is. Sweet, sweet Keithane. Oh, we are mining a nugget of pure green. Uh, Blackadder reference. Blackadder, you should all go and watch it. I have heard, I read today that someone is trying to resurrect Blake 7. Which, of course, is a show from my youth. And honestly, I, de I'm, I want to see it, but I don't want to see them mess it up. The best thing about Blake 7, of course, was the ending. The la ending of the last episode is amazing. And if you haven't seen it, you need to go out and look for it. Anyway, I am Scott Manley. Fly safe.